Chapter 13, Selected Musings, Bisexuality. Quote, I think I've always been bisexual. I mean, it's something that I've always been interested in. I think everybody kind of fantasizes about the same sex. I think people are born bisexual, and it's just that our parents and society kind of veer us off into this feeling of, oh, I can't. They say it's taboo. It's ingrained in our head, heads that it's bad when it's not bad at all. It's a very beautiful thing. End quote. New quote. I like the pole and the hole. End quote. Guerrero is not masculine only likes masculine, but rather masculine likes masculine. In the Greco-Roman past, most men liked men and women. Guerrero, the book, this, does not focus on women on the women part because that's taken for granted. I would expect the vast majority of Guerreros to like women. As such, why not why not just say that most men are bisexual? The central problem with the label bisexuality, as within the hetero homo framework, is that it legitimizes the very false framework that bisexuality, the reality, sexual flexibility that is Guerrero, destroys. Let's see what that means. Many bisexuals say that unlike alleged monosexuals, heterosexuals or homosexuals, they are attracted to people, not genitals. Bisexuality is then not a preference for both sexes, but an attraction regardless of sex. This may seem like semantics, but it's very important. It's not, I like men and I like women, contrary to the, opening, uh, to the funny opening quote, but rather, the genitals of the person does not matter. Bisexuals may have a measurable preference for certain qualities that may be found in uh, that may be found more in one sex over the other, but the preference is not for biological sex nonetheless. The Kinsey places bisexuals in the middle of the conventional penis to vagina preference scale. But why? If bisexuals are attracted to people, not genitalia, shouldn't bisexuality be outside the framework? The variable that's measured is the variable explicitly rejected by bisexuals. Suppose if I said that I don't care whether I eat chocolate or vanilla ice cream. Why should I be placed in the middle of the chocolate-vanilla divide? My lack of preference for either indicates that I don't have a preference, period. The all-subsuming hetero-homo system does not allow lacking the preference for the variable, penis-vagina or chocolate-vanilla, or preference for other if related variables. The Kinsey scale, and therefore the hetero-homo system, can't graph the nonchalance of non-preference for the variable genitalia. It also cannot graph the dislike of heteronormative ideals, prom, dating, marriage. Where do I fit, where do I fit on the Kinsey scale if I don't want to date women, not because I'm not sexually attracted to them, but because I don't want to hold in my farts during the romantic comedy I didn't want to watch in the first place. The Kinsey scale cannot graph other nuances either. Suppose the following six men. Number one, a male who strongly prefers masculine over feminine, who does not prefer gay men for the same reason he does not prefer women. As the preference is for gender, a sex-based system cannot graph this. If the masculine to feminine ratio is 9 to 1, this person would be ranked with the gays despite not being one of them and not preferring them. Number 2. A transgendered male who was born a woman but has always felt like he should have been born a man. Sex is sex, he says. A male who has only had sex with women but has fantasized about men. This guy might be entirely homosexual, as his homophobic, entire, uh, as his homophobic environment does not allow for same-sex outlets, or entirely straight via George DeRoy's cop-out that his straight performers have sex with men because they are just overly horny heterosexual, whereby having sex with men is an attribute of a supercharged heterosexuality. Number four. A male who has had sex with 10 masculine and 90 women, or 10 masculine men and 90 women, does he rate at Kinsey 1? By percentage, sure. So is he almost exclusively heterosexual? As much as anyone with 10 cocks in his mouth can be heterosexual. Number 5. A male who has sex with 4 men and 1 woman, is he more bisexual than number 4 above? By percentage, yes, and yet, he still needs six cocks up his ass to catch up. 
And do we measure by sex acts or total partners? Number six, a male who has had sex with 10 masculine and 10 feminine, 50-50, so he's as bisexual as it gets right. What if half the feminine are gay men though? But why should genitalia take precedence over gender? In the Kinsey scale, this man may be a four or five, but in reality, there may be no active preference expressed whatsoever. The great thing about Guerrero is, it, is that it includes all six of them. If you are masculine and you are attracted to masculine in whatever proportion or manner, then you're Guerrero. The point is that all of these men could be graphed on the Kinsey scale and assigned a number from zero to six. But who gets to decide that genitalia is the all-important variable, especially when some explicitly reject this often unspoken bias? Why don't we measure the Kinsey scale according to race? We certainly could graph that. Most are racially homosexual since most couples are of the same general race or ethnicity or other variables like preferred body parts or hair color. Bisexuality or pansexuality has not made much of an impact because it is a claim on oneself, I am bisexual, whereas Grero is a claim on culture or others, you are Grero. Bisexuality itself does not question the framework in which it exists. Chapter 13 includes three more short essays available on the website. With that, thank you for reading. Be sure to drop by the forum at grero.com, G-R-E-R-O, if you have any questions. Thank you so very much.